Catholicism is one of the largest branches of Christianity in the world today. In fact, there are over 1.2 billion people who identify as Catholic. That's over 15% of the world's population. But what does that mean? Is Catholicism just another branch of Christianity, or is it something entirely different? What do they believe? And does it align with the Gospel? Well, in order to answer those questions, we have to take a closer look at the Catholic Church throughout history. First of all, the term Catholic literally means universal. So the Catholic Church is the universal church. All Christians, past, present, future, all throughout time, throughout anywhere, belong to the Catholic Church. So whether or not you listen to the Pope, if you're a Christian, then you're actually Catholic. But most often the term Catholicism is linked with the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church claims to have direct ties all the way back to the New Testament Christianity, where it's believed that Peter was the first Pope. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus tells Peter, On this rock I will build my church. Well, since Peter's name means rock, many Catholics take this to mean that Peter was the rock foundation of the church, and so therefore they label him as the first pope. While those details and the details about popes to follow are debatable, there's no question that the Roman church itself does date back to the first century. The Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the Romans about AD 55, and that would go on to become the sixth book of the New Testament in our modern Bibles today. It's interesting that the Apostle Peter is not even mentioned in the book, but regardless, there was a church in Rome in the first century, and it's not hard to imagine that this church was just like all the other churches at the time, that they were persecuted and life wasn't easy for them, but through it all they remained faithful just like many other churches at the time. AD 312 was the biggest year for the church. There was a man named Constantine who was preparing to go to war and his army was outnumbered four to one. But before the battle, Constantine claimed to have seen a vision of Jesus. So he ordered his troops to mark their shields with this symbol, the chi Rho. The chi Rho combines the first two letters of the Greek word for Christ and kind of looks like a capital P with an X drawn through the middle of it. It was a sign that was used for Christianity at the time. So they go out to battle with this sign on their shields and guess what? They actually win and Constantine becomes the emperor. So why does this matter? What does one guy's military conquest have to do with Roman Catholicism? Well, when Constantine became emperor, he issued what was called the Edict of Milan. This edict or law declared that Roman citizens were free to worship whatever gods they chose. It virtually ended the severe persecution of Christians overnight. Now up until this point, it wasn't popular to be a Christian. Life was harder and they were looked down upon. But once this edict was issued, it became actually socially advantageous to be a Christian. These changes by Constantine ultimately led to the formation of the Roman Catholic Church. When disagreements occurred in the church, Constantine was the one who provided over the first church council at Nicaea, even though he had no official authority in the church. And by the time Constantine died, the Roman Catholic Church had spread like wildfire throughout the Roman Empire. From the time of Constantine until the fall of the Roman Empire, there was a constant battle for power within the Roman Catholic Church between the emperors of Rome and the church leaders. There were countless disputes over structure and doctrine, and some of the emperors thought they could get a foothold by appointing certain bishops who would implement certain doctrines really for political gain. Not all of those doctrines had a biblical basis, and those doctrines have carried over into the Roman Catholic Church today. Now that being said, not all the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church are contrary to Scripture. Roman Catholics do believe that Jesus was a real person, that he was born of the Virgin Mary, and that he was crucified, died, rose again, and that he will return one day. They also believe in the Trinity, and that the events that take place in the, in the Scripture and in the Old Testament were actual historical events. However, there are some major doctrinal differences. The Bible clearly teaches that salvation is found in Christ alone, that there's no other way in which we can be saved. However, the official teachings of Roman Catholicism say that we do have to believe in Jesus, but we also have to take the Eucharist and be baptized and obey the official teachings of Roman Catholicism, that we have to attend Mass and that we have to do good works, and that we can't die having committed any mortal sins. This might not be what every Roman Catholic believes, but this is what the official teachings and doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church state. While this view on salvation is the most crucial issue, there's also many other differences and contradictions as well. Roman Catholicism teaches that the Pope is infallible, or that his teachings are without error. The Bible teaches that no one but God is infallible. 
The Pope is just a mere human being who has no more divine authority than any other person. Roman Catholicism teaches that the Word of God consists of Scripture and Church tradition. The Bible teaches that Scripture alone is the Word of God. Catholicism elevates Mary to an almost divine status. In fact, the official Roman Catholic doctrine states that Mary was born without original sin. The Bible teaches that Mary was an ordinary woman who loved God and she sinned just like every other living person besides her son Jesus. Roman Catholicism teaches that we can earn right standing with God through good works, whereas the Bible says that we are made right with God by accepting what He has done for us on the cross. Yes, we should do good works, but our good works are evidence for our salvation, not a basis for it. To say otherwise would be to say that Christ's death on the cross was not enough. Roman Catholicism teaches that Christ's body and blood exist in every bread and glass of wine during communion, whereas the Bible teaches that the bread and wine are just symbols of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Roman Catholicism states that every time someone goes through Mass and the sacraments, that is what satisfies God's wrath against sin, whereas the Bible teaches that God's wrath was satisfied once and for all on the cross. And finally, Catholicism states that no one can be 100% sure they're saved. However, the Bible repeatedly tells us that we can know, and it lays out the plan for what we need to do to be saved. So what do we do with all this information? Are Roman Catholics saved? Well, it's impossible for us to make a universal statement about the salvation of any denomination. I mean, not all Baptists are saved, or not all Lutherans, or Methodists, or Presbyterians, or whatever denomination you might be. Salvation is not based on whether you're part of a certain denomination. Salvation is based on whether you have put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says in Romans 10.9 that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's all there is to it. And there are many Roman Catholics who believe this, so yes, the answer to that question is Roman Catholics can be saved. But the question we should be asking is not whether Roman Catholics can be Christians. It's whether Christians can thrive in a Roman Catholic environment. There are many genuine believers around the world who attend Roman Catholic churches. Some who grew up in the Catholic Church and despite the differences in biblical interpretation, the message of the gospel resonated with them and changed their life. Some genuine believers remain in the Catholic Church out of family tradition or desire to reach other Catholics for Christ. Or maybe some, even though they do understand the message of the gospel, just don't know about the differences between what they are taught and what the Bible teaches. But there are also many people around the world who have a false sense of their own salvation because they are obeying the rules and regulations of the Roman Catholic Church and they have completely missed out on the gospel. The gospel teaches that God is perfect and that we are far from it, and that there's no sacrament we can perform, no church service that we can attend, no prayer that we can pray to anyone other than Him, and if we do pray that prayer, then we can have a complete assurance of our salvation. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it helped you out at all, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.